let us stand to sing the first hymn, hymn number 15, All My Hope on God is Founded. the day which the Lord has made. Let, Let us, us rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, direct our thoughts. Teach us to, to pray. pray. Lift, Lift up our, our hearts to worship, worship you in, in spirit, spirit and in truth. Through, through Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Let us return to the Lord our God and say to him, Father, Father, we, we have, have sinned, sinned against, against heaven and against, against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have mercy upon you, forgive you your sins, and lead you to everlasting life. Amen. We continue at the bottom of page 33. O Lord, open our lips. And, and our, our mouth, mouth shall, shall proclaim your praise. Let us worship the Lord. All praise to his name. Glory, Glory to, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all, govern the hearts and minds of those in authority, and bring the families of the nations, divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin, to be subject to his just and gentle rule, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
you're able to, would you please stand for the Holy Gospel? Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Sadducees, those who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus and asked him a question. Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, leaving a wife but no children, the man shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married and died childless. Then the second and the third married her, and so in the same way all seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife will the woman be? For the seven had married her. Jesus said to them, those who belong to this age marry and are given in marriage, but those who are considered worthy of a place in that age and in the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. Indeed, they cannot die any more because they are like angels and are children of God, being children of the resurrection. And the fact that the dead are raised, Moses himself showed in the story about the bush, where he speaks of the Lord as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Now he is God, not of the dead, but of the living, for to him all of them are alive. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do please be seated. I don't know how diligently uh, you might have read your pew sheet, um, or perhaps are saving it up for after. Um, but there are a couple of riddles or trick questions um, in there, and I wonder if anyone has an answer for them. Um, so the first one is, what word is, all, is always spelled incorrectly in the dictionary? Do you feel free to? Incorrectly. Um, slightly trickier, what goes up and down but always stays in the same place? What goes up and down but always stays in the same place? It is a staircase. And finally, how many stars still remain in the sky during daylight hours? All of them. It's got a very on it congregation this morning. Um, in today's gospel reading from Luke, we hear Jesus answer a question from some of the Sadducees. Uh, the Sadducees were people who were very involved in the temple and religious laws were important to them. They did not believe in the resurrection. And this reading suggests that part of the reason for their stance is that it just doesn't make logical sense. On the face of it, I understand their concern. And it's a question that I've asked myself before. Um, for context, uh, my father died when I was quite a small child. Uh, he and my mother had been married for the best part of 20 years when he died. A few years later, my mum met my stepdad, also a widower, um, and they have now been married for almost 22 years. That means that my mum's second marriage has now lasted longer than her first, whereas my stepdad hasn't quite reached that milestone yet. I think he'd reached at least 25 years with his first wife. So when they reach heaven, who will they be married to? Their first spouse or their second? 
This is precisely the question brought to Jesus by the Sadducees. But in order to really make their point, um, they decide to take it to the extreme. Imagine a woman is married not just once, but seven times. Who will she be married to at the resurrection? It's clearly a trick question. It follows straight on from another trick question in Luke 20, 20 to 26, which is the one about taxes. And it ends with the word, that passage ends with the words, they were unable to trap him in what he had said. So whilst the Sadducees might have been really scratching their head about this conundrum of marriage in the afterlife, it seems more likely that they were intentionally asking Jesus a trick question in order to trip him up. According to their logic, the wife obviously couldn't be married to all seven men. Therefore, it was proved that the resurrection didn't exist because the laws about marriage simply didn't work in the afterlife. Jesus' answer quickly silences them. You're thinking about it all wrong, he says. You're applying the wrong logic. Marriage is part of the earthly way of living and you can't squeeze heaven into earth logic. Jesus tells them that there won't be any marriage in heaven, but even more importantly, there won't be any death. I wonder how often we do that too. How often we take our experience of earth and we use it to try and work out what heaven will be like. Um, there was a TV series a few years ago called The Good Place, uh, which tried to imagine what heaven would be like. Um, it took all of the best things from earth and put them into heaven. So, for example, the sun was always shining um, and they could eat any ice cream flavour imaginable. Um, because ice cream is one of the best foods on earth. So, it, of course, it stands to reason that there will be ice cream in heaven. But again, I suspect they're looking at it the wrong way. They're using their knowledge of earth to make supposedly logical assumptions about heaven. But that doesn't work. I'm conscious that as I've been speaking, I have um, incorrectly conflated the, re the resurrection of the Sadducees question with our modern idea of heaven. And I'm about to conflate it again with the kingdom of heaven, because I think the same principles apply. As we look at the world around us, I wonder how often we see it through an earthly lens. There is a picture in your pew sheet, um, an optical illusion that I'm sure, sure you will all have seen before. And as you look at that, I wonder, I wonder whether we see only an old woman because we expect to see an old woman. We are only aware of there being one image and therefore we see what everyone tells us that we're going to see. Jesus encourages us to look at it differently. There's a young woman in the picture too. Can you see her? In my experience, it is sometimes easy to spot the optical illusions immediately, uh, particularly if, you, if it's one that you're familiar with, it's one that you know that there are two ways of looking at it. Um, but sometimes it takes some real squinting. And in truth, I think the same can probably be said of the kingdom in heaven. Sometimes I can see it really clearly. I can see where God is moving and I can see his wisdom in a particular situation. But sometimes I really need to squint in order to see it. And sometimes I don't manage it. So I wonder what are the situations and circumstances where God is asking us to try looking from a different angle? or to think from a different perspective with a different logic. Finally, I want to finish with a, I don't know, a comfort of sorts. Many of us were, uh, were in church on Thursday morning for Bibi's funeral, um, and it was a very sad occasion. 
but it was also full of life. Jesus' final words of the gospel passage are, he is not the God of the dead, but of the living, for to him all are alive. Therefore, I'm reminded of that final riddle that I, that I read earlier on. How many stars still remain in the sky during daylight hours? As the band correctly said immediately, they are all still there. We just can't see them because we're looking from Earth. The same is true of the woman's seven husbands and is true of all those who we love but can no longer see. We can't see them, but it's only because we're looking from earth. To God, they are all alive because he is God of the living. And that is our one certainty that never changes. Amen. Amen. I am conscious that as um, sometimes happens, I think we've got a mismatch in the number of hymns and the number of hymns. It's okay, we're, we're going to have the next hymn after information of faith. Oh, brilliant, thank you. I was going to say, should we do it before, but let's do it, <laughs> let's do it after I missed that bit, thank you. Okay, in which case, let us stand as we are able to affirm our faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, who made all things? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed the world? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In which case, let's now sing hymn number 167, God Forgave My Sin.
Let us sit or kneel to pray. Let us bring our prayers to our loving Heavenly Father. In union with his Son, Jesus Christ, and in the power of his Holy Spirit. We pray this day for our world, which God has made and redeemed. And we pray for those gathering in Egypt this week at Sharm el Sheikh for the COP27 climate conference. And we are mindful of the dark, urgent and severe warnings that have been given by so many scientists. And so we pray that there would be firm action resolved upon and implemented to keep our climate down to acceptable levels. We pray, Lord, for courage on behalf of the governments of the world. They may make decisions that may not be popular, but are necessary. And we pray, Lord, for all those people in the world who even now are suffering under our climate. Remember that there many, many thousands in Pakistan whose lives were devastated by the floods of the Yetzirah Bill. And we remember those in Somalia suffering a severe famine, having had so many in recent decades. And we pray, Lord, for all agencies working with them, that they may receive the food and the support that they need this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for the people of Ukraine and for an end to that war. We pray, Lord, that the invaders will leave that country and that there may be a restoration of peace and a rebuilding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country, for our Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, for our King, Charles III. We pray for all who govern us, that they may govern us with wisdom and compassion. We pray, Lord, for our communities, and we lift up to you particularly those who this day are worried about heating, about food, and about finance. We give you thanks for food banks and for the work of the churches in this area. And we pray, Lord, that the most vulnerable will not go without heat or food this winter. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. And we pray, Lord, for your church. We pray for your church throughout the world. And we remember particularly those countries where to be a Christian brings persecution, deprivation, and even death and ask that you would give courage to your suffering church at this time. We pray for our diocese, for our bishops, Pete and Sophie. And we pray, Lord, for your church here in mill houses and in this mission area. We pray, Lord, for Matt and Claire as they have a holiday. We pray, Lord, for those grieving the tragic funeral taken place this week, that they may be comforted. And pray, Lord, that you would give this congregation your joy and grace, that they may be your lights in the world 
wherever this week you are calling them. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us stand to, to share the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Our next hymn is the one that Liz warned, about, warned us about. It's number 522, To God Be the Glory, 522 in the hymn book. Mm -hmm. Just wait and see whether there's a collection to be brought up. Is there not? Thank you. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. We sit or kneel. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, give us your peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Thank you. 
Let us pray. God of peace, whose Son Jesus Christ proclaims the kingdom and restored the broken to wholeness of life, look with compassion on the anguish of the world and by your healing power make whole both people and nations through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. We say together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. If you're able to, would you please stand for our final blessing and then hymn. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. We sing at number 405, One More Step. in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>